Thousands of people from various communities across Cape Town today attended the funeral of eight-year-old Tazni van Veik in Alsas Rafir. Her recent murder has sent shockwaves across the country with increasing calls for the death penalty and a commitment from government to review its parole system. Van Veik's body was found in a stormwater pipe near Worcester in the Boerland more than a week ago. She went missing earlier this month. An outpouring of grief and an unprecedented show of support. The funeral procession started with a march from the family home in Kanaut Estate following a private service. The funeral cortege was led by a motorbike guard of honour, activists and school children. Thousands of people lined the streets to get a glimpse of proceedings. While the Uniting Reformed Church was full to capacity, others sat in an overflow area to listen to the funeral service. Tasne's little white casket, adorned with roses, a stark contrast to the place where her body was found in a stormwater pipe about 100 kilometers from her family home. Her brutal death has highlighted what government has conceded of flaws in the justice system. Ours is just to go and implement and make sure that if you are given life, life must be life. And I'm very sure if this guy we have done proper thing as a government, as a criminal justice system, this child would be still jumping and playing. But instead, here she lies. It does give us the opportunity to say, you go back and correct things that you have done wrong. And we, I agree, Dr. Mbombo, we have failed this child. There's been an appeal for calm in the community amid the anger, grief and sorrow. This after it emerged that the 54-year-old murder suspect was previously released on parole after his convictions on 11 counts, including murder. Let's do things orderly. Let us not destroy things simply because we're angry. We can show our anger in a different way. Don't combat crime with crime. Communities have also been urged to expose wrongs in society. What I cannot understand is this, the older man in society attitude towards young girls. The appetite of the older man for the young girls. And we need to address these issues. We need to begin to talk about it. We need to begin to debate these issues. Tazne's family has thanked the community for their generosity of spirit during a most difficult time. It makes a person realize that every moment is precious and it mustn't be taken for granted. Tazne's death is bigger than all of us. I saw a community really come together and said, this is my child. As Tazna's family and friends bid a farewell, the memory and heartache of a young girl gone too soon lingers on. Vanessa Puna, SABC News, Alsis River. Let's get more on the story now. I'm joined by our reporter, Vanessa Puna. Vanessa, surely a very difficult day laying Tasni van Weg to rest. Yes, Nzinga, indeed a difficult day, but not just for those uh, covering uh, the uh, murder of this young girl, but also for the family, for the friends, for the entire community of Alphys River, and also indeed the entire society in South Africa. Um, we've seen over the past few weeks um, an outpouring of support um, from starting from the day that she went missing, uh, community involvement in searching for this young girl. We've seen people come in um, uh, sharing their love with the family. Uh, we've also seen people come in condemning um, what they call a failed system, which has resulted in this young girl, an eight-year-old girl, um, now having to be buried today. So, yes, it has been an extremely traumatic experience, and one cannot imagine um, how the parents, the mother, um, Carmen Van Vank, and the father, Terence Manuel, um, must be feeding today um, after doing something that no parent has to do, and that's, of course, to bury the young child. 
Vanessa, we saw the police minister, Becky Kele, there acknowledging that government has failed. Of course, it's not the first time that government has failed, which has led to the murder of a child. We also know in Limpopo that 52-year-old man charged with the murder of his four children uh, was apparently also out on parole uh, for murder. It's not the first time it's going to happen. And unfortunately, it's probably not the last time it's going to happen in terms of how our justice system works and the very porous um, processes that take place with police. So besides acknowledging the problems, did we hear what's going to be done? Nzinga, it's important that you ask that question because we have heard all week, um, starting of course with uh, the president himself, um, when he visited the family of the um, young eight-year-old girl, um, admitting and conceding that there had been tools in the, the justice system on a whole as well as a commitment then to re-look really at uh, the parole system in South Africa. Now, um, you know, very little has been said um, or that, uh, that I've heard on exactly what measures this will entail. Um, for one, we don't know whether the issue um, of electronic tagging of parolees will come on the cards again. We don't know whether that um, is actually being looked at. Um, it's an issue uh, that I know um, lots of people in the community, people that I've been speaking to, have been talking about. Because oftentimes parolees are uh, released uh, back into the societies where they come from. They don't have fixed addresses. They don't have fixed homes. And, and certainly the issue of the electronic tagging um, of parolees could be uh, one of the measures, I suppose, that could be um, looked at and reviewed as part of this review of the criminal justice system as well as the parole system. But that has been something that has been called for by various members of not just the Office River community, and I'm talking about communities at large across the Cape Flat, at least here in Cape Town. Um, we've had to uh, c cover quite a number of murders um, of young children. I mean, these include uh, uh, children like Aisha Kelly, who was caught in a gang class fire in Mitchell's plane. Um, recently, Michaela Williams, um, who was also uh, brutally um, killed, also by someone um, who allegedly has uh, committed crimes before. Um, and this, of course, in Zinga has led uh, to an outcry, a public outcry, and one only has to scour through social media, through the various um, social media accounts and so on, uh, where uh, communities have been calling uh, for the reinstatement, for example, of the death penalty. Now, I know just the other day, I spoke to an activist um, who is staging a hunger strike outside the gates of Parliament. Um, this activist um, has also said, um, and uh, Fadil Adams, he's, he's spoken to us and said um, what communities want is a referendum, for example, on the death penalty, but also saying uh, that while the president has early on in this week um, made it very clear again that um, our constitution does not l allow at this point uh, for a, a death penalty, this is certainly something that communities have been more and more vocal about um, each and every time we have to lay a young child um, or a brutalized woman. Um, to rest. Um, we, we've seen the outcry since late last year. Well, there was a spate, I think, in, the, in, in just a few months, a spate of young women um, and, and children that have been brutalized, that have been raped and killed, um, not just here in the Western Cape, but countrywide. Uh, this, of course, uh, the appeal, communities crying, saying that they are bleeding, um, while government has just this week and last week conceded uh, that large parts of the justice system have indeed failed communities. A horrific story, Vanessa Puna giving us an update on that from Cape Town.